So I am Neil Schindler. I'm the director of Spokane Area Jewish Family Services. Uh, thank you all so much for attending um, the film festival, the Jewish Cultural Film Festival this year, and this Q&A with director Julio Basse. Um, so uh, I will uh, remind everyone that the Q&A is being recorded. So if you know someone who wasn't able to make it today, uh, feel free to let them know. It will become available as a recording either later today or at latest tomorrow, and it will be available through the rest of the festival. Second, if during the Q&A as an audience member you have a question, you're welcome to either put it in the chat, or if you'd like, you can unmute yourself and ask in your own voice or make a comment, whatever you'd like. Um, so I think that is all. So let me introduce first Nancy uh, Wickery and Julie Morris. Um, they are our guest moderators for today's Q&A. Julie currently serves as board vice president of Spokane Area Jewish Family Services, and Nancy Wickery is a board member at large. Both serve on the organization's film festival committee. And uh, then our featured filmmaker today is Julio Basse, the director of our opening night film, A Starry Sky Above the Roman Ghetto. Uh, he was born in Turin, Italy and holds two doctorate degrees, the first in literature and philosophy and the second in theology. Um, he started as an actor studying in Florence at the School for Dramatic Art, directed by the great Italian master Vittorio Gassman. And after many years working as an actor, he made his directorial debut uh, in 1991. Um, his film Crack made that year was shown at the Venice Film Festival and won the prize for best feature debut at Spain's San Sebastian Film Festival. All told, Julio has directed 29 films, acted in 45, and has won several international awards for his work. So welcome, Julio, and Nancy and Julie, take it away. <laughs> we are Thank so you. happy to have you here, and as film lovers, we're so happy to be asked and honored to be asked to interview you. Neil, your introduction was wonderful. I also, in my research, saw that he's a Mensa member, the Society of People Whose IQs in the Top 2% of the population. So you're not only tall, dark, and handsome, but you're very intelligent. Um, we have something in common, the three of us, Nancy, myself, and you, in that we loved films. We all, Both of us loved films since we were very young. and love not only being on the film committee, but seeing your film more than once. And in seeing it more than once, it's kind of like reading a good book. The more we saw it, the more we were enthralled with how beautiful it was and how it all fit together. Um, you started as a film critic at 17, and by 24, you were in production of your first movie. So quite accomplishment uh, that you've had in your career. So we're going to begin with the questions with Nancy. So first question, Julio, is how did your upbringing influence your interest in this film? There was some problem on the sound, sorry. Could you please we'll repeat? Again. <laughs> how did your upbringing influence your interest in this film? I'm not sure if I get it well. From where I get the idea, kind of. Um, yes, what, um, what, in, what inspired, um, what inspired oh, well, you to inspired the movie. All right. Yeah. all right, all right, sorry, but you know, <laughs> connection and stuff. Uh, the, the idea of the movie came from uh, Israel Cesare Muscati, who was a, a, an eminent member of the Jewish community in Rome. Uh, I say he was because unfortunately Israel died a few weeks before uh, the shooting days started. And so that's why the movie is dedicated to him. I did not know Israel from a long time, but I could say that I became a great friend of him. He was a 70 years old man that in his life, he has done everything else but movies. So when he got this idea that he wanted to direct, it was not so easy for him to get money and let's say, you know, the, the, the trust of, uh, production company to uh, allow a 70 years old man that never did a movie in his life to uh, make his debut opera. So the, they thought that another, let's say, younger than him guy could be the director of the project. It was his long, long time dream. So 
and, and I thank Right Cinema, that is the greatest network in Italy, to that they chosen me because they probably think for my studies and for my, I don't know, sensibility that I could be the right one. So I met Israel and I was conquered by his passion and his um, character, his, uh, his joy of life, his enthusiasm, and also his sad stories that he know very well how to tell and a lot of ideas that he had. So the script was pretty different from the one uh, he and I worked together because as a, all the debutants, he wanted to make a movie with everything in it, you know? And the, his first opera, he wanted to make all the history, all the Rome, all the, all the love stories, but a movie could be around two hours. And so I tried to say every meeting with him, Israel, we have to took out this and this and this. Let's focus on the story that you want to tell. You want to tell the story of your kind of a real story of your grand grandmother that happened to have the same um, journey that this little girl had in the movie. So let's focus on this. Money wanted to make no because the young people. In fact, um, it was a great process because. Uh, he had not only the idea of the movie, but for me, the greatest uh, mother concept of the movie is made today for young people with young people. That, that's the focus of the story that conquered me right away. And when, when Israel died, I had the, the great honor and uh, to interact and to meet many times with the Rabbi, Rabbi Chief of Rome, uh, Rabbi Shmuel Di Segni, which is a great man. And so uh, I learned a lot from him that put the focus on the film, not only to be good, and I hope that we came out with a good movie, but to be real. He had this great focus in mind and, and, and passed to me too, that had to be real. And uh, that's uh, pretty much in, in, I hope, in uh, synthesis, what happened, the, the origin of the movie. Um, Is my English understandable enough? I hope so. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the hopefulness of this film the young people were so determined to solve the mystery of Sarah Cohen's fate, despite obstacles, including the parental objections. Can you speak to that? Uh, once again, sorry, I have some problem. I don't know if the, the connection or my, could you please repeat the, okay. a little slowly? Um, okay. So the hopefulness in the film was inspiring. Is that better? Yeah, the, great. The young people were so determined to solve the mystery of Sarah Cohen's fate, despite obstacles, including the parents. Can you speak to that? Yeah, sure. Sorry for that, but you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's not uh, a perfect sound, so my English is not <laughs> already <laughs> perfect. So. No, no, now it's great. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's, a, that's a part of the movie that came from Israel that I was very happy at the, at the very first moment. The fact that the, these young people they're not discovering a story and trying to you know without uh, without working they discover a mystery or make it something but they work and they work hard to find something and they work uh, through something that I love they work through theater they work through literature they work through painting music of course they are studying of music so they transform one of the probably the worst period of human history ever. Uh, they transform it in their mind today, of course, to, to, to realize how this story has been and to and the importance of the things that never have to be again like that, but also to transform this in an act of creation. It's not just, they are not just them with their cellular on a sofa talking about something. They are making an effort to do that. 
in despite, as you say, their parents. That was a, one of the tricky questions, script and the rabbi, the Jewish community. But you know, it's something that in this kind of movie, the, let's call them the coming of age movies, the, the young people, they have all, always a confrontation with their parents. It's not different from other movies in this, call it genre. It was a little more tricky and difficult because we did not want to, uh, you know, touch the sensibility of anyone. Like, oh, we don't want our children to be mixed with Christian or whatever. But talking with the chief rabbi, he says that could be like that. It could be like somebody very, how do you say, let's say conservative, that do not want that their children, they study or mix or, you know, familiarize, I don't know how to say, with other people. And so we try to be uh, in the medium like that. But the important thing, once again, is that the, the young guys, the, the young girls and these students, they make something happen through this important story for them and through them. That's, that's something that conquered me for, for the very first moment. Even because I am a father of three kids around that age. So I feel like, and th this is, again, once the, 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 the motivation that uh, pushed me, pushed me to, to choose one of the character, like to be the father, just to be really with them, to feel like uh, they feel like I was also a father, not, also, not only the director of the movie, one of them in a way. Excellent. I don't know if I, I did answer properly the question was. No, you did. You did. Okay, great. How involved and receptive was the uh, Roman Jewish community to this film and to the idea of filming in the synagogue. Um, one of the parts that really touched me so much was um, when they first, when Sophie and her friend just first went to the synagogue and were turned away because I think that's a typical thing that happens to most visitors that go to Rome and try and get in. It was so authentic. But when we went there, we had an Israeli couple with us and they were not going to take no for an answer. And we actually got into the synagogue and it is so beautiful and it was shown yeah. so beautifully in your film for those that haven't been inside. But I wondered if the community was as receptive as maybe the, the rabbi that you were working with and how yeah. they felt about it. Sure. Sure, but at, at the end of the process, <laughs> uh, the, the, the script, uh, I have to read the script, of course, and, uh, and I was happy about that because, because it's not my culture 100%. Of course, I, even if now I'm Jewish, I feel like I am because I paraphrase a, a, a quote of one of the greatest philosophers of Italian, the last century Italian, they say, we cannot call us bad Christians. And I say we cannot call us but Jewish because the Jewish people are, of course, the, like the like the father of the of the Christians. I mean, the, the, that's the that's the origin from where all came from. So, but after the process, it was pretty long. And so this script is not good. We have to cancel that. We have to build differently. This when the rabbi say yes, and the other people of the community say yes. We got the greatest reception I ever had in, as uh, Nielsen mentioned before, 29 titles that I directed. I really felt I was home. All the doors were opened. All the people were so collaborative. And you can check, there is no other, at least Italian movie that shot into the synagogue. That, as you say, is beautiful. And even me, myself, that I live in Rome from 30 years, I never, I never could enter. So through the movie, I had the possibility, I had the chance to finally enter in the synagogue and even to shoot inside the synagogue that is beautiful. So even the office, the, where the, the scenes when the, the archivist, you know, the, the, the character of Volterra, the, the, the man who take care of the, the, the the, the archives, the bibliotheque, et cetera. That was the real office of the rabbi. So it was completely wow. open-minded and all the people around the ghetto, they helped 
uh, class. I don't know if you are familiar with Rome. We have the probably the the most ancient, uh, not probably, it's sure, the most ancient Jewish community in the world besides Jerusalem. So we really feel that we are brothers. And there is no difference, and they are not. Uh, split up in the city. They are all there in a beautiful center. And so all the rules, the streets that you see in the movie, all the buildings, the school, the restaurant, the whatever, everything, the synagogue, of course, that's all shut it there. And we got the greatest collaboration. And I feel that I was very lucky. It was an honor for me making this movie. It was an honor. I didn't, I didn't forget the duty to make it well, but it was an honor as still it is. Um, and why did you pick the role? You could have probably played a variety of roles within the film. Why did you pick the role of the, of the father? Was that, um, you mentioned, and, and we noticed in the credits that your sons, you have two sons and a daughter, you have three children, correct? But the two yeah, sons exactly. were in the yeah. movie. And I was trying to figure out exactly which ones they were because yeah. it didn't have the names. It just had in order of appearance, but. Exactly. Um, yeah, um, the first part, Vittorio and Valerio. I have two kids, but the, the girl, she was, in, uh, she was in London, so she couldn't uh, uh, be in the movie with me. And she, she designed something of the custom in my other movie. The two guys are Vittorio and Valerio. Vittorio is the real Vittorio in the black and white um, scenes when the young nun fell in love, nun, the, the young girl before to be a nun fell in love with a guy. That's the guy, the Jewish guy that could not go to the world, that could not be, could, could not feel a real Italian because of the stupid fascist laws of that moment. And the guy who got cut and then died. And Valerio is the one who nowadays in the, um, the scenes of nowadays play the violins, uh, making the movie with a video camera and many other scenes that they participate in the, in, the, in, in the group of the young people that does this action. Uh, talking about my, my character, once, yeah, uh, for us, first of all, as I say, it was a, a kind of intelligence matter to me to be <laughs> inside them. Putting the putting my two kids not only make the other actors feel like they were like my kids, all them, <laughs> but also I got this kind of um, you know I had an ear you see, because at home during I don't know dinner time at home I I had the feeling that I could have some feedback of other young girls of what happened, so it was kind of. Secret services. No. That was clever. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and but but joking, it was like a real feeling that I was the father, not only the director. And and I was surprised, not only by my kids, but for all the kids, how focused they were on the set, how they feel the importance of the story that they were in in the in the in the middle of telling this story, part of this. It was a great experience because the study, the, the, once again, the concentration, the, 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 even the ego, the, the, the actors and actors, actresses, also if they are young, the ego is the, <laughs> a big part of their personalities. It's also a good thing. But in this case, they, there was never a case in which, I don't know, I have the close up, I have more scenes, they were all equal one to each other. They felt the importance to be uh, in the story and that the story was the most important thing. Not me, not them, the story. And it was a great experience. And, and besides intelligent thing, I usually I study as an actor, but in the last movies, I prefer to did not cast me um, because I don't know, I didn't feel, but because of the producer say, you know what, Julio? You probably are very good in the character of, the, of Ricardo, the father. You could make it very well. Because I, I like to play, <laughs> he even didn't finish the phrase. I say, yes, OK, I do it. <laughs> because I have fun. Playing is also fun. Directing is fun, but it's a lot of you know, work. You never, you, never, you never rap. 
is the role is work because of I don't know the weather to, tomorrow, the actor is good, the photography, sound, and then the editing. You know, when you play, it's like a it's like a, a big game. You know, you put a custom on, you say the lines, and you and you play. Another hopeful part of the film um, is that the nun turning her painful experience as a young girl dealing with her father's anti-Semitism and mistreatment of her into a positive by saving the Jewish girl, Sarah Cohen. In your research and experience, was this a common or unusual scenario? This is actually, I'm honest, is a scenario that I've never heard of. I mean, we have a lot of stories about um, nuns or priests or even church community that helped a lot of Jewish people from being uh, from the deportation and then from concentration camp. But I, we do not have a real experience of a nun that fell in love. I mean, a girl that fell in love with a just and then transform herself into an end. That's something that it could happen, but we do not have, I have to be honest that the rabbi teach me well, uh, we do not have any real uh, proof of existence of that. But that's, that's why we try to mix it up. A lot of real stories in a single one. Uh, Sarah Cohen is probably, never existed, but exists in a lot of other histories. That was the important thing for us to tell. That happened a lot. First of all, happened the most, uh, I mean, I think that like the darkest hour of, of the human being in those years, no? I could never imagine how full a human mind could go to imagine that laws and imagine that that incredible and 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 sad uh, way of a way of of behaving, but there are also good stories, and we we have to you know also have as you say give optimism to the to the next generation, and uh, the good stories the where people they try to help other human beings they don't care if they were Jewish or Christian, helping human being to go to death for nothing. And there is nothing, and there is, even if there is never a way to go to death or to war or whatever, racism, et cetera. And so that's where the, our intention, and even that little, I don't know, there is not a wall between Christian and Jewish in Rome, but that little, uh, not 100% understatement, there was another thing that go, for me went well in the movie because of the end, love stories and comprehension and working together, being together, that was an important part of the movie that um, even the Jewish community and the Christian community, they get it well. Thank you. Okay, can you, can you tell us a little bit about your feelings about the ending of the film, the way in which everything kind of seemed to come together, the, um, the grandmother, her saying that she wanted to remain Catholic, that that's more who she was, the granddaughter taking on Judaism, the conversion, which was so beautiful, and then the hopefulness at the end. Did you feel what was your feeling about wrapping it all up in one pretty bow at the end? I, 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 thought, I always thought that it was a great way to uh, show how uh, we can be, you know, interchangeable uh, as human being and as religious people. Uh, the, the old woman, she has lived all his life or her life in a way and it was kind of strange to make, no, now I go back from where I were and what kind of difference could make in her last years. So it was a great feeling to be, I was raised by that. I'm, I feel like that. Now I'm, I'm like that, I wanna be. And also uh, it's so interesting that the young girl that has all her life 
in, in the future, she could see all her life. She decides that has to be to go back from the real, uh, I don't know, origin, the real, uh, uh, and also for feeling, probably she felt something. There is one uh, uh, kind of magic thing in the movie and is the, the music. Sophia composes a music that is exactly the music that she never heard because it's the music that the father of her grandmother played that yeah. night when she, they were in the record. So that's a kind of um, uh, a, a little, a little, how do you say, advice that she, Sophia, could feel it in her blood, in her mind, in her, in her, in her mind, in her spirit, let's call it spirit, something that we do not see, we do not touch, that she felt that she wanted to go in that direction. And so these two things going differently, so as a matter of love, but as a matter of love, uh, we, I had the great feeling from the last minute and it was already in the idea of Israel and I thought it was a great idea and I hope that works well in a movie too. Okay. We wanted to give an opportunity to those that are on the Zoom call or Neil, do any of you have any questions that you would like to ask uh, Julio? Julio? Catherine? Um, you mentioned that you learned a lot from the, uh, am I speaking clearly enough for you? Um, yeah, okay. sure, definitely. Okay. Um, you mentioned <laughs> that you learned a lot from the rabbi, the for the Rome, um, the rabbi, chief rabbi of Rome um, in the making of the film and your research. And I was wondering, you said you'd lived in Rome for I think 30 years. And in that time, had you had much connection with Jewish people or anybody or Judaism? Because you seem to have learned a lot from the rabbi to make it so authentic. Um, and what now was the your... has been, now the sound has been bad for a oh, few seconds. It is for us too. Yeah. Um, you, for you too. Okay, so maybe if I speak slowly. Um, you lived in Rome for 30 years and you said the chief rabbi was very helpful in your research and you learned a lot and you made the movie very authentic. Um, had you had connections in your time in Rome or as a child with Judaism or with Jewish people because you did capture the essence of Judaism so well, so I congratulate you for that. Um, but did you learn all of that recently or had you had chances in, you know, previous years to meet Jewish people? Uh, yes, thank you for the question. I, I, as I said before, because I study a lot of theology just for my passion, it, it is not, I mean, worthy for a movie director to know these things, but I have my passion. Uh, studying theology, you cannot call yourself but Jews, as I said before, because it's like um, when, I, when my kids were very little, when, and they asked for me, what is the difference between Judaism and, and, and Christianity? I take out the Bible, the Bible that we had at home in my home, and there was a volume like that. I say, see, this 90% is the same, and this last piece is not the same. So we have a lot, a lot, a lot in common. Much more in common that we have different. At the end, we can we think differently, all right? And uh, so how could I not feel like love my uh, kind of biggest brother? And I always been, um, I, I do not want to say fascinated because uh, it's not so different, but I only had kind of respect for people uh, like the Jewish people who take care so much of culture, study, the alphabet, the, I mean, the books, the love of, uh, to love of what you, not only what you show or, or your house or your car, but what you have in your mind, always. Then talking about the rabbi, um, it's, it's difficult to tell so many hours I spent with them, but he had, uh, always a way of even make me discovering concept that there are difference between the two cultures like 
I tell you one that it's my heart forever. Uh, the word in happiness, I don't know how to say that in Jewish, but it's a way of being, you cannot be happy yourself. It's like constant to, you, to be happy, you have to be happy and the people around you have to be happy. If not, you're not. So this sense of community in that Jewish word, I don't know, probably someone of you could know it better. It's so different from the Italian felicita because it's another concept. I could, I don't know, win at the lottery being happy <laughs> in Italian and, 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 and many other things that could belong <laughs> in this session to say, uh, or as I said before, to be concentrated in the, in the um, in the, in real facts in the in proof in the in books in the, in articles in, in real history and uh, or I don't know in in a couple of scenes I have to reshoot him because the, the, the young guys did not have the keeper on kissing a girl on the on the streets and I I didn't realize how important the keeper is and uh, and I feel like it's important if there is a tradition in the, that said, it's not just a fashion way of having, it's like having a hand of God or, or whatever your interpretation is. So you cannot behave in, 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 a, in a, let's say in a, uh, not bad way, but in a free way, completely free way with that on. So, many things that I learned from him and I always thank you for, for that. And just to follow up, um, you obviously are a very well-read um, person and are interested in history and culture. And did you know a lot about the Holocaust um, because of your reading or did you know some Holocaust survivors as you grew up or some Jewish friends that had parents who were survivors? Yeah, as a, as a, about, about the Holocaust, um, in, in Italian school, at least at mine, in Turin, or for where I study, they touch it a lot. I mean, they, they really, and also Turin is the city with Primo Levi, that you probably know, I mean, it's one of the greatest writer for me uh, besides uh, the fact that and so it's the city of him and so se questo è un uomo if this is a man i think is the translation of his book one of them was one of my kind of build this romance of my formation book of my youth so because it's so strong and so powerful make you understand so well the 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 craziness of those moments and of those times that, uh, I mean, I knew, I mean, not everything, but I knew a lot about Holocaust. And, um, and I think that in this case, I do not want to be too much maniac about movies, but movies helped a lot about that because thinking about Schindler List, La Vita è Bella, I could mention hundreds of them. Even this little festival, little, sorry, but they're not kind of, <laughs> or, 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 or Venice, no? But tonight I feel well with you and a lot of other festivals. They're so important because it could be that young people that do not want to read or to study, but showing, you know, watching with their eyes what happened. That's very, that's very important. And I learned a lot actually also through movies and through very, also some, some very good fictions I remember in the past. Also some bad, but I mean, for, for, there are the very good one that stays on time, you no? Know? Schindler List, it will be here forever, I think. And, um, or some documentary that I saw or some, you know, and of course, before making this movie, I, I, because it's part of me, I, I, I like to read and to study and to go deep in what I'm making. I discover great, great, great books and, uh, and stuff. One is called the Il Girasole. I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know how could be the translation in, in, um, in English, but I mean, a lot of them. And also sad books like, uh, 
uh, Anna Arendt or James Hillman or the or the Nuremberg process, like the banality of the evil. That's the translation, more or less, in, in Italian. I don't know. So, and I think it's important. That's that's why before when I say it, it was an honor for me when like cinema and Italian producers decided I want the one that could tell this story. But half an hour later, I feel the duty to make it right because I think it's important that these things, the more we talk about them, the more it's important that we spread, uh, the more we have to learn because these things, they should never happen again, never. Alan, did you have a question? Yeah, so um, I thought the casting was terrific. The casting, mm -hmm. and, yeah, and your your kid, your your own two kids were in it. So the the rest of the kids were they professional actors? Uh, and secondly, in casting, like how many how many tryouts and how many people were in, were involved in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the question. Yes, the casting process was the, probably the, the, the greatest problem that I had at the beginning, right, right there. I say, um, to make people going to high school, you cannot have um, famous actors because, you know, at 18, uh, I mean, could be some cases, but they were not in Italy. So my casting director, Teresa La Saudi, who did a very good job, I think, she was crazy sending letters, email, searching for all Italian schools of dramatic arts or wannabe actors. Or at the, at the end of the day, they, she came out with probably, I don't know, 3,000 between pictures and self tapes and stuff. And she, she divided like, at me, arrived like 1,000 between pictures and, uh, and self-tape. Now we reduce at 100 people that I myself audition on camera. And then we reduced uh, the last real day that we go in a real studio with a real crew to make the last audition, like 25 people, and then the last 12. Uh, that you see in the movie. Uh, I agree with you, not because it's my movie, but they're very, very well. And as I said before, so focused. And, and also answering to your question, yes, all professional actors, at least all professional, all, all young people that want to be, they want to be actors, they, they study, they have their own career. And so I was impressed by that because my kids, you know, they know the job because I feel like we are in kind of circles, you know. <laughs> the, yeah, my kids, I, I, I always drop them with the sets. When I have a script, I, I let them read it. And so it's kind of easier. But feel like people that really are so determined, so focused and so um, with the mind, with the, with the willing of making a good thing. It was pretty impressive. And once again, never a problem. Not a one hour delay or somebody came to the set, I don't know, drunk or, <laughs> or stoned or whatever. Really, really professional actors. Very good. I trust so much, young people, not only because I have three kids, so you have to trust them for, but I feel that young generations that sometimes we, think they are kind of little bad because of cellular phones or whatever, because they probably read less than us or, but I have a lot of trust. I, I see them, I see them making a lot of good things. For example, the planet, they finally decided we have to save it. And uh, nobody like them, they, they're fighting for this. It is so important, so important. Melanie? Yeah, my question is, I, I believe you said that Israel, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I, I believe that you said that Israel based um, some of the story on the story of his grandmother. And I was wondering what aspects of her life were portrayed. 
Yeah, because for what uh, for what he told me, his grandmother was saved from I don't know if a, mon a monastery or a church, and uh, and unfortunately she lost all her family. So and and, and, and then she did not became Christians as in the story, but there are pieces in different um, other real stories that we put together, but. His one was like this one. And he had a lot of loss in his life from other sad moments in Rome, the Fosse Ardiatine, uh, the Nazis were crazy, not only there, but in Italy, in Europe, they, were, they made terrible things. And when he talked about that, uh, Israel, uh, was not so open like in other moments. So I didn't I didn't want to get over this fact that I felt that he had a kind of different feeling, you know? And um, so I, I did not push too much inside his, I don't know, conscience or whatever uh, you could call it, because I know even reading books about that, that the, let's call it trauma of that is not so easily overcome because I mean, I could also figure because what could happen, but there are terrible things to remember, to live, to overcome, to pass through. And um, yes, it was the story of his grand grandmother that was saved by probably a mo monastery and uh, and make it as, as I as I for what I learn reading uh, Primo Levi sometimes even make it was not enough because it's like also the guilty that I make it and a lot of people my family did not and probably is the is the reason because uh, Primo Levi took his life so the problem is tricky and 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 of course I did had not have the the, the how do you say the I did one one touch things that I don't know very well. That's what I want to say. To dedicate for me. So so back to the music. I um I saw the film three times and <laughs> I didn't realize that actually it was the same when Sophia is playing on the violin that that was actually the same music that. Um, when they were first brought into the monastery that the father was playing, um, but it was beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. And then the song that the kids sang right after, um, I think they they were celebrating the performance. Um, what what's the significance of that song? It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, I, I, I I'm curious. There are subtitles in those moments or not? Because it's a great point. See, that's another kind of. You uh, ma magic, let's call it magic moment, synchronicity. Carl Gustav Young could call it synchronicity. Um, the song is from a very famous Italian singer, Sergio Camariere, and this is probably the, his great hit in his career till now. I hope he will have a lot and critics award and stuff. And when I asked for him, and we are friends because we collaborate in other, in other, in other movies, other, other things. Uh, I mean, I wrote some, some lyrics for a song that he knew music in another movie. So, but we, we knew each other for a long time. When I asked for him to have, uh, to have this song, Tutto quello che un uomo, all a man could do, uh, talking about Rome, he said, and he wanted to read the script and was honored too to have his music being kind of the choral, the central moment of the movie and also in the end credit. And he said, you know that the writer of the lyrics with me is Roberto Kunzler, which is, which is a Jewish writer. And I say, see, nothing happens by chance. And, uh, and it's not so, it's not so frequent, you know, it's kind of 
let's call it a case, let's call it by chance. But and I I I thought I always thought that that, that song would be perfect to make this great moment between Jewish, Christian, young, uh, female, male, together singing about life, something about life. Thank you. And I'm very happy about that shot made in the, uh, made with a drone about Rome. In the same shot, and I did not see many shots like this, probably never seen. In the same shot, there is St. Peter, which you probably know is the center of Catholicism in the world, the Christianity, and the synagogue of Rome in the same shot to see even from above how close they are, how close we are in the same kind of shot, in the same pictures, not from the moon, from <laughs> yes. the, even from the moon, we are not close, we are the same thing. We have a little ball, beautiful blue, but we are all together. Okay, we'll make this our last question. Go ahead. Um, it's just a simple question. It's not really important, but I was just curious. You said you had 3,000 applicants for the roles. Were any of the ones chosen Jewish just because I thought it might have given yeah. them an atmosphere or an ambiance to the whole religious aspect? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Once um Israel before died, he had a kind of group of people making lecturing, making a kind of improvisation about the movie. So and I went a couple of times with him with kind of this call it theater group making saying the lines of the movie. And uh, the first thing that I've done when uh, Israel died and take him, two or three of that group be having in the movie. Actually, the nun is Jewish, the young girl, mm -hmm. uh, another couple, actually now, I don't remember, but I uh, another couple of actors, the, um, how, do you, how do you call it? The, um, the main, how do you call it? The main professor, the ones that say to the, to the, to the, the students, I have to ask to your, um, it's not a pro in Italian we say preside is like the chairman of the school that woman uh, dark hair in the movie and so a few of them and uh, not in probably in the actors that send the picture and make the self say not of the one that gave material to us but the ones that they have to I feel like for respect they work with him a lot of times and was kind of heritage that I have with me and a little another little piece of Israel in the movie. Thank you. Uh, yes. Nancy and I want to thank you uh, not only for Spokane and for ourselves for making this movie, but for the Jewish people, because the more young people that see this, the more the more people in general, not just young, the more the story gets told and understood. And you did such a beautiful job of portraying um, this element of the Holocaust. So thank you very much. And thank you for granting us this interview. And Neil, back to you, if you have any closing um, comments. No, I just want to thank um, Nancy and Julia for doing such a great job. And Julia, thank you for joining us in what is uh, increasingly late <laughs> in Italy. Yeah. Uh, thank you for staying oh, wow. up. And we talk a lot. It was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because and, it, was, it was a real pleasure. And uh, once again, I'm sorry for my English. I, I thought was, I hope that I was understandable enough. And uh, yeah. believe me, the honor is all mine. And your mm -hmm. words are so making me feel so happy in my heart to have done wow. a, a, a real job at the rabbi taught me. Thank you so much. Yes, thank no need so to much. apologize for your English. And thanks also for those who attended. Really love to see your participation in the festival. So thank you as well. All right. Well, take right. care, everyone. And good evening, Julio. Thank you. Good night. All right. Good, good night. Good night.